since I came here. So there's one piece that I just finished that I'm not sure if I want to perform because it's kind of incomplete, but I think I'll actually perform that one. Um, so it doesn't really have a title. I'm just going to go into it, um, and I hope you can appreciate it or it means something to you. Um, not sacred, these dark, dirty memories we place in one another when the clock strikes the peace of midnight, when le calvaire breaks loose and somehow we make the puzzle that the puzzle that is me and you fit like two letters, like us. En réalité, elle brûle notre guerre. Nous qui, I mean, we who were given bodies that fight the world so heavy we almost break things on impact once we fall in love and leave these dark, uh, dirty, diamond-like stains in each other's hearts before we fall asleep. And that clock strikes the half of midnight that made us all beautiful and damned. Loving you is a war story. Goddamn, letting you go is black magic, is voodoo, is the pain you feel of a love built in unholy places, in basements of bad parties, doing horrible drugs, loving each other in the most beautiful ways. This love we performed alone at midnight in the moonlight, this heartbreak we've now built on remixed English. Thank you. I call him Daylight. It's almost like he was born yesterday. He still got baby fat around his mouth and this shiny, soft skin about his face, seemingly, un seemingly unscarred by time or that lie he was told of forever ago. This is how he should be remembered, as that balloon of light skin and memories that by some miracle in childhood plugged his mouth with a thumb, breathed, and expanded into adolescence. By the looks of it, he never stopped flying. He's always on cloud six. Even when it's cold outside, he got palm trees on his tongue and his conversation is always leaning on the other side of the West 45 highway. Up there in his world, when he lets someone drift along with him, the sunset is fresh pressed wine, horizon a red sword, and the blade is bloody. He's got a rough diamond caught in his throat. The way that man talk, it's hard to hear anything else. Doesn't say the right or wrong things, but whatever feels warm, whatever pulls heaven into gemstones and then into words. For this reason, this is both the first and last time I'll ever call him Nicholas. The name has always felt unfitting on a man of such infinite energy, and when I look up, I know why. Every sunset, I remember that no matter how many wounds he is nursing by his lonesome, no matter the weight of his history, his soul is untethered, and he will touch the sky again anyway. For this reason, I cannot help but call him Daylight. Thank you.